Uh, good evening, my friends, brothers and sisters. So good to be on this evening. Sorry for the the little delay there. I uh, was actually um, searching for something, but I found it. Amen. Uh, good evening, uh, Brother Laverne Watson and um, Sister Judith Douglas. Brother Oral Williams, good to have you on this evening. I see Sister Watson on as well, Celia and uh, Anne-Marie Armstrong. It is so good to have you on and uh, welcome to, to another Wednesday evening from my space to yours uh, on this virtual platform, the Sandy Bay New Testament Church of God Facebook page. And um, what a blessing it is to have this this platform, this medium, so that we can reach out. There are others, of course, this is not the only one, but we do appreciate what this offers. See, Sister Cynthia Campbell is on as well. Pleasant good evening to you, my sister. Thank you very much for joining us. So, this is another Wednesday evening, and they are moving very fast. Uh, sometimes we get confused, or or we are a little bit dazed by the the swiftness in which the time is moving and we are already at the end of May and um, let me pause just to celebrate once more with those who are celebrating birthdays in the month of May uh, today we have Sister Sandra Ramsey uh, from the Sandy Bay Church as well you know, today, uh, yesterday, we had Sister Takesha Curtin Thompson celebrating her birthday. You know, and so we we are all we are so delighted. Last week it was Chrisanne and others, but the month of May is a very special one, and we give God thanks for all those who were born in in May. Back in the day, we'd go to rallies and. Uh, they would sing to collect an offering uh, those who born on may skip around sha la 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 yeah some of you remember <laughs> uh, they don't do that anymore thank god All right but um that's the way it used to be i'm sure brother oral williams would remember from back in the day they probably sang that song um, um and, and may just be in his recollection Right, it was a very popular uh, song to do when collecting offerings. So this evening, those who born on May can skip around, and especially if your birthday is today, you don't only need to skip but run around and jump as high as you can. But we want to just wish for all those who are born this month all of God's blessings, and uh, that the peace of God will be upon your lives. Uh, for many more years to come. God is not through with us yet and every year we are allowed to see another birthday where we can celebrate and we have a breath in our bodies right we can still breathe in the oxygen that has been provided the breath of God it is it keeps us alive then we must be thankful we must express gratitude and even if it's not your birthday, just the fact that you are alive and you're still breathing in the oxygen that you can't see, you can't touch, but you know that without it, you're going to die, then be grateful and show that gratitude to our God who is able, who is faithful, you know, who is always ready to help his people. I want to just reassure you that whatever it is that you're going through, whatever struggles you might be encountering, that one of the most powerful sentiments coming out of the scriptures, but in the New Testament in particular, is that God is able. The Bible says able to do far more exceedingly, more abundantly than we can ask or imagine. Uh, eyes haven't seen what the Lord has in store. Ears haven't heard. I mean, we can't we can't even 
think about it. We can't even conjure anything in our in our minds. We don't have the mental capacity. We don't have that kind of framework to really process all that the Lord has in store for those who love his appearing. So we 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 know that God is able. He will carry us through. He will take care of those who belong to him. Whatever didn't go well for you today or hasn't gone well since the start of the week, you know, we continue to put these matters before the Lord, recognizing that his grace is sufficient. Uh, we've been waiting for some time. It hasn't happened as yet. Yet we are still here. So it means that it is not what we're waiting for that is going to keep us going. We're already going. We are already sticking to it. We are already staying the course. We are already on the path. So let us just continue to trust the grace of God. Whatever he has in store for us, then it will come to pass. Greetings, Sister Vary Anderson Evans and um, Sister Donna Thomas, both sending greetings to pastor and to church family. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us look to the Lord then as we get this started in the way that we know how to the best way let us pray lord we thank you for the great the amazing grace that lord you you have extended to us abounds to us even now thank you lord for coupled with that grace is mercy lord we know that uh your grace is given to us lord what we do not deserve and god your mercy representing oh god us not getting what we do deserve so lord we thank you all in all for all that you have done for being who you are lord you are amazing you take us through day by day week by week month by month so it really it really doesn't matter how fast the time might appear to be going lord you are the one who controls time and so, Lord, everything that we place before you and in your hands, we know, Lord God, that it is well-timed. Lord, as it unfolds and as things work out for us, uh, Lord, we trust your timing. God Almighty, we place all our disappointments and we place all our aspirations before you. We place all our struggles as much as we place all our victories Lord before you and give you thanks God Almighty we do not know what the future holds but we know you the holder keeper of the future thank you God for being who you are Lord thank you for being so amazing thank you for your love thank you for your tender mercies Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for bringing us thus far. Hitherto, Lord, you have brought us. We have come this far by faith. God Almighty, faith plus or coupled with your grace will carry us to where you want us to go. Lord, we, I present to you all those who are on the platform right now and those who are, who are, who are, who are tuning in, those who would want to be on but cannot be on, those who... Lord, would have made a decision to view this broadcast at a later time. I pray, God Almighty, that your blessings will be multiplied to your people, and that you would grant us the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, even on this platform, Lord, to communicate and to channel the truth to our hearts. And God, to grant us the wherewithal to put your word into practice as we study and as we learn. Lord God Almighty, let your sweet spirit fall on us afresh, even in this space. O oh God Almighty, let your, your breath breathe on us one more time. Fill us with life anew. Lord, that as we study your word, we may know you as we know more about you. Thank you, God Almighty, for knowing us. Thank you, God Almighty, for granting us audience every time. We don't deserve it, Lord, but yet... You still call us by name and you embrace us. And oh God Almighty, despite our weaknesses and frailties, God Almighty, you entertain our presence. Thank you for shining your face, your light upon us. We look forward, God, to all that you have in store. 
and we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the church say amen. Sister Daly is on. That's Maureen Smith. And Sister Loy Maxwell Johnson. Both of them saying good evening to everyone. Praise the Lord. Sister uh, Christine Smith is also on. And I greet you well. All right, so we I just have uh, along with just a reminder of of the dates that were given for the proceedings for Brother Bright's farewell memorial uh, grave digging. You know, all of that remains in effect still. There has been no changes, but um, uh, I did announce on Sunday last Sunday that uh, the church community would have suffered another loss a member of our church who was living uh, overseas uh, in the United States I believe sister sister let me just get the name for you Jean Gordon right sister Jean Gordon uh, was uh, the, the, the death announcement I gave it on Sunday right and um, for those who do not remember Sister Jean Garden, uh, some persons might remember her mother, Prudence Samuel. So, so that is how the message was phrased to me, and I conveyed it just that way on Sunday. And when I did, uh, some persons seemed to nod, in as if they remember who the person is now, right? So, so um, she passed away. She died. And we send our condolences to our, her her family, to her children, uh, Claude Spence, and um, he is uh, well known as well in the Sandy Bay community. And so we offer prayers for the family of the late Jean Gordon, and just to let you know that the funeral service for her has been set. Um, they are bringing the body uh, to Jamaica, to her home, for her to be buried here. And uh, they have asked that the service of Thanksgiving be held at the Sandy Bay New Testament Church of God. And I did agree, so I'm going to be doing it. And I do. I would lo also love for those who can make it. The funeral is going to be uh, during the week. It's going to be a weekday. A work day so I know that it's it, it presents some sort of complications for especially those who have to work right but it's going to be at our we're going to be ho hosting the funeral on Tuesday the 20th of 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 June right two days after Father's Day which is the 18th Sunday the 18th of June so Tuesday the 20th of June will be the funeral service for the late Jean garden and so I want you to spread the word I'm going to announce it um, uh, again at church on Sunday and uh, every opportunity I get leading up to that time of course the funeral service for brother the late brother Levi Bright uh, follows uh, quickly thereafter on the 24th of June also at the Sandy Bay Church so the funeral service for sister Gordon the late sister Gordon will be at 11 a.m. on the 20th, Tuesday the 20th. And uh, it will be a similar starting time for the Thanksgiving service for Brother Levi Bright, which will be on Saturday the 24th of, of June. Also for Brother Bright, for those who would love to say something, to offer some kind of a tribute or, or to eulogize him in whatever way, shape or form, but you will not get a chance to do so at the funeral service. There will be a, a memorial service on, on the Friday night, the 23rd, at 7 p.m. at Sandy Bay Church. And of course, this is in lieu of a wake. So there will be no wake for Brother Bright, but um, there will be a memorial service at the Sandy Bay New Testament Church of God. So please help me to spread the word for those who are on, and um, let's see how best we can uh, lend support in 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 these times of loss, uh, grief, and, ber and bereavement for these family members. 
uh, I say lend because all of us will need that support return to us uh, sooner or later all of us and so we look forward to receiving the kind of a support that we are willing to give Jesus says do unto others as you would have them do unto you so I'm going to love people I'm going to share with people as much as I can we're human beings we're not perfect and we can't do as much as we'd want on any given day but we try our best and we put ourselves forward that way to be a blessing to others so that when the tables turn and the tables have a tendency of turning we can also receive similar support and even more from others uh, uh, when that time comes all right so those are the announcements that I will make for this evening and we'll just move post haste then to our lesson for this evening uh, our text this evening uh, comes to us from Acts chapter 2 verse 29 to 41 and from the topic that you can see on the on this live video uh, we're going to be looking at uh, the Pentecostal impact because we are in Pentecost month uh, Sunday coming is Pentecost Sunday and uh, we do acknowledge the coming of the Holy Spirit but as as I've said time and time again maybe almost every year you know and ever so often I, I remind the church that it is not the how of Pentecost that eludes us uh, we have mastered the how and I've said that whether we are genuine or we are fake the mastering of it comes out where we struggle and what continues to elude us is not the how therefore but the why uh, the why of Pentecost you know the rationale for people to understand what the coming of the Holy Spirit meant what 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 the the, the presence of the Holy Spirit means to the church and uh, therefore or consequently what impact should be observed personally and, and, and by others because there, there must be some visible signs you know there, there must be some changes there must be some transformation clearly when we look at the, the Acts account of, of, of the Pentecostal awakening and arrival you know it, it it, 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 you didn't see a set of people that having experienced the coming of the Holy Spirit, having experienced being filled with the Holy Ghost, just continuing with the same old, same old. They, they were transformed. And it sent a clear message or picture both to those who were observing and, and not just back then, but centuries after, right? Millennia after, right? We are still observing the transformational power of the Holy Ghost in the life of the church and so we, we, we want to uh, just spend some time this evening looking at this Pentecostal impact uh, Sunday the, the, the ladies will be having their their combined service at Sandy Bay Church and we look forward to embracing the ladies this is what they would have been doing so Sunday will mark uh, the final in their series of visits to the churches on the district for a combined effort we're going to embrace them and so I will not be sharing the word and so I want to get this in uh, as we look to observe Pentecost and as we continue to acknowledge as we would have been looking at since the start of May the the, 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 the Holy Spirit the power and presence of the Holy Spirit in the church it is what Pentecost is all about and so we see the narrative in Acts chapter 2 good evening sister Bethune Lawrence good to have you with us praise the Lord Acts chapter 2 verse 29 to 41 the, the narrative uh, relates an experience that, that was observed right after the dawn of, of, of the Pentecostal flame upon the men and women in the upper room as per 
the instruction given to them by Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. Verse 29 of Acts chapter 2 says, and this is the New King James Version, Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried and, and in his tomb, and, in, and his tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet, knowing that God had, had shown, sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would rise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He, foreseeing this, spoke concerning uh, the resurrection of the Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God has raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. That, that was the, the result, that was the, the effect of the Holy Spirit coming. Men and women spoke in tongues that were clearly understood by those who were in the city at that time. For David did not ascend into the heavens, verse 34 says, but he says, but he says himself, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. You know what? That includes us. We are part of this prophetic word here. Those who are all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Verse 40. And with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word, verse 41, were baptized, and that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. All right. Um, uh, uh, so we say amen to the word of the Lord. Um, good evening to Sister Yvette. Um, Sister Vary Anderson Evans saying no exchange for the ladies. There, there. No, no. There was, there was never any exchange. Um, just uh, some of the ladies coming in from the other churches as it, it was done but this Sunday is Sandy Bay's turn all right sister Dolores Bright is also on and we always enjoy having her presence on the platform good to have you sister Bright God bless you and to all those who are listening in because not everybody will have a device on but uh, maybe you're in your home and other family members are watching and listening i greet everyone in the mighty name of jesus so we're looking at acts chapter 2 verse 29 to 41 as we observe pentecost sunday this sunday the 28th is observed right across the globe as pentecost sunday right not necessarily an event or a public holiday some denominations treat it that way uh, but we don't we observe Pentecost but guess what uh, Pentecost is is observed by us every day of our lives for we are Pentecostal church so it is not an event for us per se but we continue to operate in the Pentecostal sway of the New Testament in particular because we believe in the, the power and presence of the Holy Spirit as the, the leader of the church in this uh, dispensation and age. So the word Pentecost, just to give you a, a brief um, 
synopsis for, for many it's a reminder for some of you would have known this already uh, the word Pentecost literally means 50 or or 50th day the term originated with ancient Judaism's celebration of the first harvest of the agricultural year Pentecost was the time when they gave thanks to God for what the land had produced and for what their labor in the fields had yielded so it this was a a major celebration for Jewish people right across the globe the observance of Pentecost in Judaism occurred seven weeks after the observance of Passover and involved Jewish men gathering in the temple in Jerusalem to mark that agricultural cycle Pentecost went by various names in the in the Old Testament it is called uh, the Feast of Harvest in Exodus 23 and verse 16 it, it is called the the day of first fruits in numbers 28 and verse 26 and in Exodus 34 verse 22 uh, it is called the Feast of Weeks. This can also be, this is also used in Deuteronomy 16 and verse 10. And these, of course, are all passages from the Old Testament. For this is a, a celebration, a festival that, that predates uh, the coming of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, as recorded in Acts chapter, chapter 2 right so so this celebration was 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 well established and the fact is that god is always pre-prepared he he's not making things up as we go along right so this festival would have been put in place centuries before the coming of the holy spirit to reign and to offer guidance and leadership in this dispensation right god would have it that the Pentecostal celebrations of the first harvest that was that was acknowledged and celebrated by Jews right across the world would afford them the opportunity to meet in one general space and and this was by God's design right so so while they would have had a historical significance for this harvest God would have put that harvest celebration in place centuries before as a type of revelation of the Holy Spirit as a type of the Spirit of Christ as a type of God the Father himself meaning something greater that was to come so that it would have bearing it would have a reference it can be seen in the Old Testament so when you see first fruits in the Old Testament it is referring to that which is celebrated at Pentecost you know during Old Testament times when you see the Feast of Harvest it is talking about that Pentecostal or uh, that Pentecost uh, festivity or festival the day of first fruits the Feast of Weeks uh, to be found in Exodus and Deuteronomy. So the, the Pentecostal celebrations has historical value. So, so there's a basis for it. There is a there is a type of what we now have in the Old Testament and we can make reference to it. So what we celebrate is not something that we just pluck out of the hat. It has historical significance. The Christian observance of Pentecost is so called because it occurred during this major Jewish festival when Jews from all over the then known world were gathered in one place, Jerusalem. It happened 50 days after the end of Passover. Uh, however, rather than being observed as an agricultural festival, the Christian observance of Pentecost is marked as the birthday of the church. It doesn't lose its agricultural significance. Because again, the agricultural 
uh, reference to it is 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 actually uh, uh, symbolic of of the kind of harvest that was to come at the dawn of the Holy Spirit. So in it is it is it is the day recorded in Acts chapter two, right? The day recorded in Acts chapter two, uh, uh, when the Holy Spirit suddenly filled the upper room where the disciples gathered, uh, what appeared to be cloven uh, shaped tongues, uh, a flame appeared over the heads of each of them, and they began to speak in languages, tongues that were not familiar to them before, that allowed all the people gathered in Jerusalem from more than a dozen different countries to understand what the disciples were saying in their own native language. And you can read Acts chapter 2, verse 5 to 8, that they heard them, those who were visiting Jerusalem from other countries that spoke different languages and uh, were in need of an interpreter or a translator rather to translate what was happening so that they could be a part of and play a role in the celebrations and the festivities but they heard these unlearned followers of Jesus who who as it were you know would have been without a leader a physical leader because uh, uh, their leader would have been killed would have been crucified according or as per the Romans and the Jews right but the leader would have uh, uh, risen from the dead and would have ascended to the father praise God but these men and women follow these instructions and experience the coming Pentecostal fire that is the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. This was their experience. And those who were in Jerusalem benefited more than all. For they heard the word of the Lord being prophesied, being preached to them in their own native language. For that occasion... They never needed a translator. They never needed anybody to interpret what was going on because each and every one of them heard the message in their own language. So whatever the native, the nativity, whatever, whatever the, the, the ethnic background and cultural background, whatever their language preference or their language disposition, because maybe it's not a preference, but this was what they heard the word of the Lord in their own language so it's like going to an international assembly for example our general assembly that we go to and there are ear pods and and there are headphones that are offered to persons from spanish speaking countries french speaking countries you know other languages so that those who are visiting from these other provinces where they speak another language outside of the universal english they can hear the transactions they can hear the 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 the, 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 the discussions the conversations that are being held in the general assembly which is an international um, 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 set up every two years in the church of God they can hear whatever is being discussed in their own language you have translators but on that Pentecostal or at that Pentecostal festivity or festival these men and, and women from other provinces that spoke different languages never needed the help of a translator because they all heard the message of the gospel being preached to them in their own language now you see that that's what we talk about that's what we mean when we talk about the the pentecostal impact it it must be immediate it must be felt but it must also be observed so brothers and sisters one writer notes that the, the, the power and the, the impact of Pentecost was, was that the confusion of languages that was associated with the Tower of Babel 
in Genesis 11 verse 1 to 9 was, was actually being experienced again, but this time it was in the reverse. Because while the, the impression of or, or the effect of different languages drove people apart, as it as as it was in accordance with the will of God, right? God God confused the people by giving them different languages, different tongues. They couldn't understand each other, and so there was a massive uh, uh, split or divisions taking place in Genesis chapter eleven, verse one to nine, where those who spoke the same language had to combine and they had to they 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 they, they had to group themselves together and go their way and it was that way for all the other groupings of of languages that the lord would have placed among the people to confuse them right but now at pentecost we are we they experience another uh, uh differences in languages but this time it wasn't to separate this time it was to come together it was to bring people together because this was happening as people from all over the the then known world were able to hear the message of the gospel in their own language so pentecost was a refashioning of the notion of an agricultural festival remember i said that i hinted at it earlier that this is what was celebrated during the original jewish festival of pentecost right but this new pentecost which marked the dawn the coming of the holy spirit right for this dispensation it was a refashioning of that agricultural notion since on that day according to uh, verse 41 of the text read a while ago right 3000 souls were added to the followers of Jesus yes the church was established and the church began to grow exponentially it it was massive for, for you to start a church right with 120 and then by the end of the day you add 3,000 to it, 3,120. And that's just simple math because, you know, everything points to the fact that it would have been more because they wouldn't have counted women and children, right? So it, it, it was exponentially more. But look at the impact of the Pentecostal movement. Look at how impactful Pentecost was. 3,000 souls were saved. But we talk about the impact of Pentecost. And there is a biblical character that we have to look at how the Holy Spirit impacted his life. Right? We, we can't ignore the presence of Peter. We can't ignore it. Right? Because Peter, after the Pentecostal baptism, he was the one that boldly declared the message about Jesus in front of this large crowd of people to whom he had previously been afraid of, even speaking Jesus' name, according to verse 14. Yes? Wow, look at look at look at this turnaround in Peter. Look look at this transformation in Peter. Look at this about face. About Peter. And you recognize that something phenomenal must have taken place. Look at Peter. And I want us to remember who Peter was, you know, right? Because sometimes we, we read the New Testament and, and we look at, for example, the exploits of the Apostle Paul. And we don't remember who Paul used to be and where he's coming from. And this is not a call now to bring up people's past in any negative way, but instead in a positive way to look at where people are coming from to where they are now. Perhaps you can look at yourself and think about who you were before and where you are now and see if you can, you can add that value that the Holy Spirit would have added to your transformation. I spoke Sunday at church 
about putting on meekness or, or gentleness, one in the same. And I said that you know, the quotation is, meekness is not weakness, but, but it is actually strength under control. We know what we are capable of. We know and remember where we are coming from. But because of the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, we are able to sub put the flesh under subjection. We are able to contain our, our mental framework and processing so that we do not go astray and bring out that which we would have been trying to suppress uh, since we started on the Christian journey. So, so brothers and sisters, I want us to reflect on where we are coming from at all times. Don't forget who you were. Do not, do not, do not dwell on it as if to, to become so enamored once more that you want to go back. No, that's not what we're, we're looking to, to do. But what we want to establish is, is, is who we were versus who we are now, who we have become via the grace of God and the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. So we can look at Peter. Peter is a, is, is a character study right that we we cannot forget who peter was and what peter would have done because remember peter was the one that betrayed jesus sorry not betrayed Jesus, but denied jesus scratch the betrayal part that's judas right iscariot but peter denied jesus peter like so many of the other disciples deserted jesus and then on top of that, Peter remembered, would have remembered, that Jesus prophesied to him that it would have been so. And Peter said, no, Lord, not me, not I. I will go the 100 mile with you. I will go to the very end of the earth with you. Yeah? But then, when they came and arrested Jesus, Peter was one of the first to desert him. Later on, to deny him. So Peter was a little bit shaky because even though Jesus would have sent word, you know, uh, tell my disciples, you know, that I want to meet with them. And then he would add, and tell Peter as well, so that they knew to include Peter, right? That's how far removed Peter would have been. And Jesus knew this. So Peter would have been reintegrated but 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 somehow you know would have still felt that boy he was not qualified that he wasn't worthy that he shouldn't even be with a lot peter would have been seen as 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 a coward for he deserted jesus but then i don't know why 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 they would even they would even allow him to feel that way because it's not as if he was the only one right if it were not been based on what we see in the scriptures uh, for the presence of the women you know the marys and 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 company that really followed and paid attention to what was happening uh, in terms of the the, the 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 trial of jesus the scourging right the walk to to, to from pilate's uh, palace to to golgotha right if, if it to the to the tomb itself to the resurrection if it were not for the women right i don't know what would have happened where the reports where this resurrection uh, 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 is concerned i don't know where those would come from because all the disciples deserted jesus all of them and and no doubt did not want to identify but peter would have been led to feel a particular way maybe because of the, the kind of uh, an emphasis that jesus would have placed on him if you love me feed my sheep right uh, jesus would have said to peter with emphasis right so peter would have been you know a, a cowardly person or at least that's how he would have been observed so uh, peter was a, a fisherman the son of a fisherman you know uh, that's all he knew he, he didn't study anywhere so nobody expected this kind of boldness to come from a peter right nobody expected it because he was seen as the the cowardly person you know uh the one who deserted jesus in the garden of gethsemane right but look at what is happening to peter in this text here and for those who are just joining, we're at Acts chapter 2, right? 
and we're, we're looking at verse 39 to verse 41 right look at peter and you see someone who is no longer cowardly but is now courageous i observe sister jasmine henry good evening to you thank you for joining us in our bible studies this evening always welcome and sister Lilith Clark as well saying good night to everyone God bless you so so Peter Peter was was somehow making an about about face from from being a coward uh, to to now transitioning to uh, someone who was courageous hmm? Peter if you observe would have been one who was 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 frightened you know he was on the boat when when jesus was walking on the water though he was the one that dared to step out but like all the others would have been frightened would have been fearful right you know what i say it's a ghost yes and 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 the fact that he would have been who would have would have felt like the others would have felt in terms of Jesus not being with them physically now and that everyone would, 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 would kind of be on the lookout for them, on the war part for them now, they would have been scared. Maybe even petrified because, you know, when the Jews started spreading it, you know, that these men, you know, these followers of Jesus, you know, they might be, be spreading the oaks, you know, the, 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 the big lie. You know, for, <laughs> for those who are in the United States, you know, and those who watch the international news would, would recognize the big lie that that people talk about you watch the news media and they talk about the big lie and it has to do with the maga republicans right and that big lie but back then there was a big lie from in the time of jesus right that that he was not resurrected from the dead and so it was a hoax and so they would have been on the war path and they would have been looking to arrest the followers of Jesus. So, so Peter naturally would have been frightened. Nobody wanted to say not much. Their master, though they would have seen him that he was resurrected, he had ascended. And so he gave them instructions, go to the upper room. Like, what, 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 what? he's going to come back down. He's going to come back in the upper room, right? You know, so they would have been fearful, but, but, but Peter he made an about face after the Holy Spirit came so he moved from frightened to, to being fearless he feared for his life after the arrest of Jesus and subsequently went into hiding but after Pentecost Peter was no longer afraid instead Peter was willing to call attention to himself yes Remember, you know, this is the same Peter that when someone in the crowd after they arrested Jesus says, there is one of them. He used to walk with Jesus. He was a follower. And Peter said, no, it's not me. I was never with him. I don't know this man. He denied Jesus. But now Peter was willing. He was ready to identify identify with Jesus and declare him to be the long awaited Messiah of Israel. Peter was no longer frightened. He moved from denying Jesus to defending and declaring Jesus. The same Peter that denied Jesus in our brothers and sisters. The same Peter that took Jesus off the cross. <laughs> to phrase it that way. To prove to the people that he didn't know him. The same Peter is now declaring Jesus to be Lord, to be the awaited Messiah. What was it that caused this transformation? Was it because Peter just had a change of mind? I, I, I don't think so. Was it because Peter, you know, got some sort of uh, uh, an awakening? You know, and you know, it's like something—a light bulb moment that he experienced. You know, was he caught up somewhere, and you know, some guru touched him and whispered something in his ear, and he became smart. Did he take a crash course in biblical history and prophecy and interpretation of events and so on? Uh, no, that—that's not it. 
the only thing that happened that would have been distinguishing in light of all that was happening is the fact that the power of Pentecost came into Peter's life. The Holy Spirit touched him and empowered him. There can be no other explanation, no other rationale for Peter experiencing the kind of turnaround and transformation that he did. Remember that this is the uneducated Peter. The, 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 the words that Peter spoke in this initial sermon that he preached after Pentecost. This is scholarly. These words are the words of someone that is versed in theology, biblical, Old Testament history. Someone that's versed in, in, in the Torah, in the Tanakh, in, you know, in, in the poetry of, of Old Testament scripture. Not, 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 not some little fisherman. You know, that, that's why they couldn't accept Jesus because Jesus spoke in the, in the synagogue on the Sabbath as if he was this well-learned scholar. One who studied at the feet of Gamaliel or, 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 or one of the, the scholars of the day. No, they said, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph, the carpenter, which would make him a carpenter as well? Because back in those days, whatever your father did, that's what you had to do. Father was a fisherman, you're a fisher boy. <laughs> who would grow up to become a fisherman? Right? So, so, so Jesus, uh, he was a carpenter's son. So, so, so when he grew up, naturally he should be a carpenter. What, what is he doing? Interpreting scriptures. Talking about today, this prophecy is fulfilled before your very eyes. It's a blasphemy. He's a carpenter. He's not a messiah. Carpenters don't become messiahs. Well, at least that's how they thought. Peter was not expected to speak the way he did. Peter was not expected to be able to voice any of the words that he voiced because Peter was not one of the intelligent, eloquent one. He did not belong to the intelligentsia of the day. No, he belonged among the fisher folk. So if you ask him about snapper and if you ask him about parrot fish and if you ask him about banga, if those, if those were the fish that, that time, then he could tell you tell you that that's a lion fish and you have to take care of it a particular way tell you where to throw out your net how to build net fish pot that was Peter you know he was supposed to tell you how to catch fish because he was a fisherman yet Peter would have would have totally uh, amazed everyone present like people thought well, who, who is this man where did he study? How, how, did he, how did he come to know all that he's sharing with us? How is he so versed in the Old Testament prophecies? And, and, and how is he able to interpret it and, and help us to even apply it? My God, it was the power of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, the, the same power is needed in the lives of all Christians in the church today. And if we're going to have or leave any positive and lasting impact on the world while we are here, during the time that we are here in the land of the living, then we must, like Peter, experience the impact of the Holy Spirit, the impact of Pentecost. The Pentecostal power must be experienced by those who belong to Jesus Christ. We cannot look to change the world or to cause or initiate transformation uh, among our family members, uh, among our, our co-workers and our peers, you know, classmates and schoolmates. We cannot, you know, uh, our employers, right? We cannot, our employees, we cannot create any kind of impact that is going to be lasting, that is going to be genuine if we do not embrace the Pentecostal power of the Holy Spirit. It just can't happen. Because right now so many of us are 
like Peter, we're, 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 we're timid. We're, we're not bold enough. And, and we need to pray for boldness. And I admire the Apostle Paul because Paul did not spend his prayer time uh, uh, praying for material wealth and praying for temporal things. No. Paul knew that, boy, these things come in accordance with the will of God. Paul says that he had learned to be content, right? Some days you have much, some days you lack. But he has learned whatever state he finds himself in to be content. You can only experience that contentment if you are aware of the impact and have felt the impact of the Holy Spirit. That, that's the only way. So we need to spend more of our time praying for boldness, praying to be courageous. Lord, help me. Grant me more of your grace. Fill me more with your Holy Spirit, with the presence of your Holy Spirit, so that I can be bold because we are so timid. But we don't want to talk to nobody outside here. You know, I mean, Boy, I wish pastor went there, but I wish pastor went down here to take them on because, boy, you know, him, him, uh, uh, him know if he said the thing. But it's not like you don't know what to say. It's just that you are not bold enough. Jesus promised that the work of the Holy Spirit, and we looked at it uh, since, since we started this month in, in uh, one, of the, one of the sessions, uh, 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 previous sessions, that just at the right time, in the right situation, the Holy Spirit will bring back to you whatever it is that you need to say in defense of God's word. So once you are spending time in God's word, don't worry yourself about whether or not you're able to recite it at will or whether or not you're able to quote the entire passage word for word. Just at the right time, the Holy Spirit will either give you a direct word for word recital that will maybe surprise you or he will give you the right paraphrase. Sometimes you're not able to say exactly where to find a reference of scripture, but you know that it is there and you speak that word with power not because you are mighty and because you are strong and healthy physically no but because the power of pentecost the impact of pentecost which is the holy spirit is within you so we need to pray for boldness i we we're praying for all kind of things we, we we go to, to god and we want god to Give us this and grant us that. And Lord, I want to build up this. God, I want to buy this particular car. And Lord, I want to go here and I want to go there. And I want to start the business. And these are the items that preoccupy our prayer times. I, I know, brethren, I know it. These are the items, the, the, the temporal things. I mean, people just want something that can suffice right now. Right? We're not thinking so much as we ought to think concerning the, the work of the Lord. The fact that why people need to hear this message just as much as they needed it in the time of Peter. But it cannot come from someone who is timid. Someone who is shy. and Someone who, why no sir. We, 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 we want to use the scapegoat like Moses. I don't have the words. Uh, God say, alright, you still go because I will send Aaron with you. No, we don't need Aaron because we have the presence of the Holy Spirit. All we have to do is begin to read God's word. And let the Holy Spirit create that impact within. For you cannot read the word of God in any genuine way as you search for God and not be impacted by it. But you have to spend time in there and let the Holy Spirit move you from being shy and timid to being courageous and bold. That is the impact that comes from the Holy Spirit. And I've heard testimonies. One sister at a church that a pastor shared that she could not go up to that podium to stand to do anything in front of, a, of, of an audience. Cold sweat would wash her up there. She would freeze, as it were, in her position. And when she opened her mouth, people would tell her that her mouth is moving, but they're not hearing anything, so they're wondering if she's praying for a baby like Anna. 
And so they say, any day now, Samuel should be coming. Right? She should conceive. Because she be opening her mouth, but nothing, nobody can hear. Uh, she say, uh, people say, turn up the mic. Volume. But then I hear things. That's, it's not because this woman, this sister, did not want to say something. I didn't have something to say. But she was shy. Timid. Some, sometimes maybe even intimidated because some of the church people are easy you know when you're know, ready to show displeasure you know and and a full favorite up there you know you guys can be mean it, not even just what you're saying but even with the looks my god man scare the poor people them they don't want to come back they don't want to do anything but even more than people's faces and expressions and what people might say is the power of the Holy Spirit that will empower us that even in the face of, of, of insult and, 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 and disappointing looks and, and disregarding looks and degrading looks and condescension coming from others, the Holy Spirit empowers us like Peter to speak the truth whether or not people want to hear it. They're empowered to speak God's truth like Peter we need to move away from not just shyness or timidity but we must move away from being fearful we must move away from being fearful fear will cause us to not identify with Christ you know because we, we, we don't we don't want to be cancelled we don't want to be earmarked and isolated and ostracized to be ridiculed people can say yeah, you see Christian over there so why say I'm a Christian and people laugh and say yeah man I agree scan them yeah man all of them are hypocrite and you know all of them are a, 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 a follow white Jesus blue eyed Jesus and you know they, 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 they allow you this this mob that is out there called the world you know they have a way of intimidating those who uh, profess and identify with Christ. But we need to pray more for the impact of the Holy Spirit to, to really come and, and touch our lives so that we can move from a state of fear. Because when you are fearful, it can make you feel as if you're experiencing paralysis where it's like you freeze you don't know what to think you don't know what to say and sometimes when you open your mouth to say the wrong thing comes out and then that push you into more fear and coupled with fear is always doubt and when you are fearful and full of doubt you cannot be courageous and bold at the same time the two don't get along they don't walk together hand in hand we need to become fearless but it is not something that is achieved on our own no amount of 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 preparing and and doing research and and allowing myself to become familiar with certain words and phrases and quips and and, and, and become versed in the verbiage. So no amount of preparation, pre pre preparing that way can get me to the point of being fearless. It is only the power of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit, that can allow me and you and us to be courageous and bold to the point of being fearless and when you become fearless then like peter you will not be so moved to deny christ because you're afraid of what others will think but you will be ready to identify with him like in acts chapter 11 and verse 26 it tells us how christians got the name christians because the men and women right there in Antioch they were saying of the Christian community those who were following Christ that they were doing everything like Christ they were living like Christ they were walking like Christ they were talking like Christ so they surmised that these people who are doing everything like Christ they must be Christians they must be Christians so the brand Christian came about as a mockery. 
So they were saying, watch the Christians, look at them, look at the Christians, watch them. And they laugh at them. Well, nothing must have changed, uh, even, to, even to present day, modern times, because people still mock you when you identify as Christian. They call you grease can, they call you hypocrite, they call you uh, uh, gospel grinder, they call you uh, uh, bench warmer, all kinds of things. Because what? You identify with being Christian. See, if you identify with Muslim, nobody now mock you. <laughs> if you come out and say the Shahada in front of people and say, there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger, nobody will mess around with you. They say, All right, leave him alone. Because they suspect that boy, you have the propensity oh, to, 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 to be triggered and might do something to them that they don't want. Nobody molests you or mocks you when you identify with, with Islam or you know, there are those who are anti-Semitic but, but, but as a Jew you, you really can pass off as being white and Caucasian anyways to some degree so nobody really messes around with you that much, right? And then the Holocaust would have caused a whole lot of people to say you know what, let's show sympathy and compassion you identify with a Jew no problem, you identify as Hindu, nobody messes around with you because after you die you're going to come back in our life form anyways you, but the minute you say I am Christian it's like people see an occasion to mock you why? because you profess to following Jesus Christ but that's what we should settle for and so we, should, we shouldn't show any fear right? I am a Christian and I am proud to be called a Christian some of us at our workspaces people don't know that we are Christians I remember some years ago, a friend of mine invited me to a, a work uh, get-together you know, with some of his co-workers who were playing some basketball and some dominoes and things. And, you know, I was there and one of his co-workers, you know, because I would have been a pastor in training, a Christian just as well. And one of his co-workers, you know, we were having a conversation and he said to me that boy, you know, that, that the young man that invited me, who was a member of my church, convinced people, trying to convince people that he's a Christian, but everybody knows him and a non Christian. And believe me, I, I felt bad for him. Right? I felt bad for him. I wanted to say to the young man, Yes, he is a Christian, but it was very clear that though he would have said it, that by his lifestyle it was not shown. So he said mockingly, you know, say he actually convinced some people say I'm a Christian, but it's almost as if what was coming from him is that ah, uh, but me know say I'm an unknown Christian. I wonder how many of us, people that we associate with, may think we're joking when we say we're followers of Christ. I wonder how many of us, some people don't even know, for we do not indicate any at all neither with our words nor by our actions that we are indeed followers of Jesus Christ. I wonder how many of us can have that finger pointed at us. We need to work on that. We need to become fearless to the point where we can identify with Christ. It's the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit alone that can empower us to that position or that state. And like Peter, we must develop a passion for defending and declaring the Lordship of Christ. I'm not telling anybody to go get aggressive and try to force anything down anybody's throat. I'm not telling you to impose or superimpose yourself on anyone. I'm not telling you to go out there and become hostile. No, we're not, we're not, we're not forcing Jesus on anybody. But we must be ready to defend the gospel of Jesus Christ. We must be ready to defend the Christ of the gospel. Because if the gospel is the good news about Jesus Christ, then we must be prepared to defend this good news and be courageous, bold, and fearless to declare this good news. We need more passion for declaring the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Too many people are folding under pressure. Too many of us, we are hiding. Too many of us, we, we don't want to, to stand out. You know, we just want to blend in. We don't want to be... No, we must be different. 
We must look different. We must sound different. Our very appearance must be different. There, there should be something about us. And I'm not in, ex exhorting now to, to traditions and, and dress codes. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about there must be an aura. Something that comes from us. That no matter what is happening. No matter what the setting. People must be able to say there's something different about that one. Because everybody's working on the floor, everybody's on the line, but and people are cussing left, right, and center. But there is something about that one. No cussing. Everybody is seeking to expose themselves, their bodies, and everybody is, is skimpily clad, but there's something different about that one. He or she, there's some amount of, of decency about them that stands out. It's not that they're trying to highlight themselves, but they take pride in, in the temple of the Holy Ghost. They take pride in, in, in the bodies that the Holy Spirit now dwells in, now lives in, and say they recognize that they're ambassadors of the kingdom of God. So when we step out, we must step out as the true royalty that we are. We don't step out looking like the world. The world don't dictate to us. The world shouldn't be give us our cue. The world shouldn't be our standard. Oh, the world standard is a very low one. The bar is very low from the world. Anybody can meet that standard. But it takes someone that is empowered by the Holy Spirit. Whose life is impacted by Pentecost. To stand up and declare with passion this is who i am i am a child of god i'm no longer a slave to fear no longer a slave to sin i don't need to 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 hide i don't need to be fearful i can be fearless because i now live in christ i'm a christian <laughs> i'm a christian i'm a follower of jesus christ i want to do everything that like he did I want to talk like he talked. I want to love like he loved. I want to pursue peace like he pursued it. I want to, to, to be compassionate as he was compassionate. I want to be able to speak with authority like he spoke with authority. No, we don't need, he didn't need to cuss off anybody. Jesus never needed to throw a word at anybody in any personal way to settle any, any kind of conflict or dispute no jesus was very direct was very forward he spoke the truth maybe you liked it maybe you didn't that didn't matter to him he spoke the truth he stood for justice i'm gonna stand for justice for truth he says i am the truth so i'm gonna stand for truth and so should you brothers and sisters peter's turnaround shows to us that the Pentecostal power is a real force to reckon with. We know from Peter's background that what he said in this initial sermon after the Pentecostal outpouring in that upper room could never have come naturally and innately from Peter because he was smart, intelligent, because he was well versed and learnt. No, he wasn't listed among the learned of his day. No. He was a fisher folk. Fisherman. Could catch fish. He could teach you about catching fish. But yet, what was coming from Peter made it very clear that something impacted his life. Or better yet, someone. It was the holy spirit think about the impact that the holy spirit had on peter's life because after the power of the holy spirit was poured out on pentecost he stood up boldly and preached the gospel resulting in over three thousand people being saved peter preached with such a passion with such precision and and you know accuracy Peter hit the heart of the message that touched the hearts of the people. They couldn't help but cry out, huh? what shall we do to be saved? No, 
Oh my God, I know that there are some speakers today that prize themselves and prize themselves for being so impactful and for being so so persuasive that when they speak, men must respond. I don't feel that people must respond when I speak, but I feel that when I speak and the Holy Spirit says, you must respond, you cannot resist. So it's not me, but it's the Christ that lives within it's the holy spirit that impacts my life impacts my speech my words i don't know what to say sometimes but the holy spirit sends the right words the verbiage comes out and i don't know some words i use and i say boy is the first i'm using that word thank god i use it in the right context huh? I, I i i don't consider myself to have achieved anything or attained to anything I just know that the Holy Spirit would have transformed my life. The impact of the Holy Spirit is on my life. So when I speak, I seek to speak as an oracle. Someone that is being used as a channel, a, a, a conduit, simply to get the message across to the people of God. I don't speak because I think I'm so smart or I'm, I'm so intellectual and I'm such a theologian. I don't even call myself that in any personal way. I'm just a student in the Word trying to learn more and more about God, trying to grow spiritually. Because if I think that because I'm a pastor, then it means automatic spiritual growth for me. That's where I'm lost. I have to seek to grow daily and the Holy Spirit brings the Word to me and allow me to embrace and entertain, entertain the, way, the word so that I can use it later on. Brothers and sisters, it is the Pentecostal power. It is the Pentecostal impact that will cause people to turn their lives to the Lord. It's not you. So stop. Take yourself out of the equation. Yes? And allow Christ to live in you and through you via the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Pentecostal power is not power to act crazy or do strange things. Because we have that thing about, you know, people, put it in loose air quotes now, people getting in the spirit or catching spirit. And we think that, boy, you know, it, it, it's, it's about doing crazy things. It's about the movement of your hands, and that, 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 that's anybody can do that. that. That's not hard. You have people that have trained for years. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's like some special school or a special course, you know, in Pentecostal movements that some of us get, you know, and we move a certain way. But but that's that's not what Pentecostal power is for. It's not for. It's not to act crazy or, or, or to do strange things. The Pentecostal power is, is not a trophy that you put on your mantle or you put up you know, on your spiritual uh, mantle or your, your spiritual vanity and you say, boy, well, you know, the, this is it. I, I have my, my doctorate in, 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 in Holy Spirit movement. And I'm, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, so this is my trophy. No, it is impactful. It is transformative. It is a, a life-changing. Yes, it is the impacting power that enables the believer to be an effective witness for Christ. What did Jesus say to the disciples? Wait for the Holy Spirit. And you shall be my witnesses after the Holy Spirit comes. You shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, then to Judea, right? To the uttermost part of the world. He would have already told them, and lo, I am with you even to the ends of the earth. Jesus went back to heaven. Then how was he going to be with them? Through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. This is why he said to them, the comforter is coming. The Holy Spirit is coming. Wait for him. Brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit is here. 
I know some churches still have tarrying service and I don't bash anybody for that. You know, people want a spiritual awakening, a spiritual revival. People want another touch. That's fine. But we really don't need to wait for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here. What we are waiting for is really our individual experience. But the Holy Spirit came for when the day of Pentecost came. The Holy Spirit came down. The dispensation of the Holy Spirit began. The church was established that day and has been a force to reckon with ever since. Not because of the smarts and because of the power packed people that have been in the church. Oh, God bless the forefathers. God bless those who pioneered before us so that we can enjoy some benefits now. But it wasn't their power. It wasn't their know-how and skills and abilities. It wasn't their prowesses. No, it was the power of the Holy Ghost. If we are going to achieve anything more, if we are going to accomplish anything as a church in this 21st century, it cannot somehow shift to us and what we can do. But it must remain the power, the impact of Pentecost. We enter Pentecost Sunday with this in mind. It, it's, it was never about us. And it should never become about us. Yes? Sister Venice, glad to have you this evening. Thanks for joining. But it should have never ever been about us. Sister Judith Douglas, it, it, it was never ever about me or you, or you or me, or you and I. It was never ever about Sister Nadine Campbell highlighting herself or Sister Donna Thomas being able to show the... No, it was always about the Holy Spirit. He used us today. We are used by him. We thank God for using us, for allowing us something to do. And when it is done... We go sit down and hold the corners. Jesus says, we were just servants. We don't deserve anything. We don't deserve no accolades and pat on the shoulder and to be exalted and hoisted in the air like, yes, yes, hip, hip, hooray. No, no we are servants. We do as we are told. We are used. We are exploited by our master because that's who we are. Servants. I just want to remain a conduit, a channel when the time comes when my conduit cannot be used anymore, then the mantle is passed to somebody else according to the will of God and the purposes of God. It's never about my pick or who I choose, whom I choose, because it's not my show. I'm just a conduit. Times like these we must sing, Touch me again, Lord. This moment I feel like a fresh touch I need. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in thy strength and thy power. Come in thine own gentle way. In times like these, we need to ask for the breath of God to breathe on us anew. Breathe new life into us. In times like these, we need to sing, revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. It's the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. Let us take ourselves out of the picture and let the Holy Spirit reign and have his way. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, fire from heaven Pentecostal power dawned and descended upon humanity what a fire Lord what passion burned in the hearts of those who received God Almighty as much as we, we immortalize and, and oh Lord God we, we treat with, with much reverence as we read your word that which transacted on that day. Lord your word points to us today having the same power available to us. Lord we are not strangers. We are, 
We are part of your kingdom and your word declared. Peter declared it in his sermon that even those who are far off and those who are not even in existence as yet, that they too would receive the fire and power of the Holy Spirit. You're talking about us. We were included. Just as Jesus prayed for us in the Garden of Gethsemane, Lord, so too the Holy Spirit was promised to us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Breathe on us afresh tonight. Oh, enter this platform and breathe on everyone who will, will even pause for a short period of time to tune in to what is being said on this platform. Revive, fill each heart with your love. Rekindle our spirits, God. Oh, Lord God Almighty, speak into us Speak through us. Use us for your glory. Lord, just help us to tell the story. Lord, we will obey. For there is no other way. We are asking you to use us, God. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you. We ask you now to burn in us. Burn out sin and carnal weaknesses. Oh, Lord God, empty us, Lord, of everything that is not of you may your holy spirit rest remain and abide in our hearts both now and forevermore remember lord those who are in sorrow and mourning remember those who are hurting lord those who are sick and in need of healing remember those who are struggling with timidity and 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 fear those who are doubtful god we pray for boldness we pray for courage we pray for strength by the spirit that god almighty we will be willing to stand and declare i am a child of god i am a friend of god that you know our names that you call us daily and that we are willing to stand up and declare that you are indeed lord thank you lord god almighty for empowering us we will move forward trusting you and depending totally on the Holy Spirit. Have your way, Lord, in our lives, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. The church say amen. Praise the Lord. Let us embrace the Pentecostal flame, brothers and sisters. Let us embrace the power of Pentecost and recognize that it was never ever about what we can do. But it is what the Spirit of the Lord has empowered us to do. Seek after the answers that you need. Seek godly wisdom. And seek the Holy Spirit to empower you to do that which he has called you to do. It was my pleasure being with you this evening, another Wednesday night. Let's look forward to uh, next week. Wow. Next week, Wednesday. I think that's the 31st. That's the last day of May. Is it? Monday is the 29th. Tuesday is the 30th. Yes, Wednesday. Last day in May. As we continue to look on the Holy Spirit. The role that he plays in our lives. How he empowers us. How he can help us. Praise the Lord. Pentecost never ends. It's, it's, it's not restricted to the 28th of May. We are Pentecostal people. Meaning, the Holy Spirit sways and guides and leads and instructs us. We depend on him for guidance every day. Let's continue to focus on him. My countdown specialist has abandoned tonight. I'm not seeing her or hearing her. I don't know if she fell asleep. But thank you very much for joining this evening. Again, remember those who are sick, those who are hurting. Let us continue to pray one for the other and continue to to uh, embrace. I see Sister Jasmine there putting something through. What, what's that? What's going on there? I, I don't even know what's going on there at all. Oh, Lord. But God bless you, Sister Jasmine. <laughs> uh, let's see. That's why I couldn't, I, I, I can't, I, I couldn't forget uh, that next week, Wednesday is the 31st, right? Because I know where the 29th is. Amen. Praise the Lord. But let's look forward to all that the Lord has in store. Uh, he's a good God, and we continue to trust him. So we are out tonight, and I am counting down. Five, 
four, three, two, one. Peace, everybody. See you all on Sunday face to face for those who can make it. And those who cannot, look forward to having you in the virtual space. God bless. Have a good night, everyone.